I have this thing to look forward to every week. It's like sweaty, stressful, high stakes activity. And right now, we are missing that. And I know we're missing it. I know we are missing it. We are going to fix it. Well, boys, it's back. Tron's of Osiris is official. It's, it's back, boys. March 13th, Destiny 2 is going to get Trials. Now, they're bringing back the Destiny 1 armor, one of the best-looking armor sets in the game. It's going to glow. That's right, boys. It's going to glow if you go flawless. So you can show off and say, hey, boys, look at me. <laughs> I'm the king of PvP. I'm the, I'm, the, I'm the king of the damn game. Every single week. Now, we don't know all the rewards that are available, but I'll tell you what I'm excited about. I'm excited about all of these maps that I'm seeing in the background. We're seeing Anomaly in the background. We're seeing Cauldron in the background. We're seeing Exodus Blue in the background. Some of the best maps, some of the funnest maps for 3v3 uh, small team game modes. Now, they can be absolutely crazy in 6v6 as well, but these were some of my favorite maps to play back in the day for sweats which, I mean, obviously was pretty rare, but for Trials, these maps were insanity, and they're coming back. Now, these angles on these maps allow for shotgunning, they allow for sniping, they allow for fast gameplay, and if this sandbox, I mean, if they really nail it, like they're saying in this video, that has me pumped up and excited. So you guys get, you better get training, because you just have a couple weeks to unlock your true potential. Because the first weekend of the new season, March 13th, that's literally the first Friday. So find a team, get ready to play, and from what I'm hearing, it is connection-based as well as card-based matching. So what that means is if you have zero wins, you're going to fight other people with zero wins. If you have six wins, you're going to fight other people with six wins as well. That means that the further you get into your card, the more difficult it's going to be. And if you want to go flawless, you're going to have to dominate some most likely very good teams. Now, one thing to note is power levels do appear to be enabled for this. So you're going to actually have to play quite a bit to get your power levels up or else you will be behind. That means if this season is ending in just a couple of weeks, I recommend you do some pinnacle activities. Do some raids. Do whatever you can to get that power level up because going into that, it's going to matter. And so for someone like me that's been a lazy piece of trash, uh, I'm in a bit of trouble. I'm going to have to put in some time and get those power levels up or else I'm going to be at a uh, bit of a disadvantage. But that's okay. In my opinion, a lot of the annoying things in the sandbox are getting nerfed, they're getting patched, they're getting, you know, removed in some cases, such as backup plan on Arantil. And I think that overall, even though the sandbox doesn't look perfect, I feel like there's a lot of very frustrating weapons that aren't going to be as frustrating moving forward. I would recommend using some meta weapons that you know are going to be meta based on the patch notes that we currently know. Things like the Spare Ration and Thorn are going to be good. Outbreak, or sorry, Outlast, the Pulse Rifle is going to be a great Pulse Rifle. Pick up some of the meta snipers. Pick up the meta shotguns. You know, Mind Benders is really good. Will it stay good? I don't know. But you want to use these things and start practicing with them because in a game mode like this, people are going to use the best stuff. They're not going to meme around with a scout rifle. They're not going to meme around uh, with terrible weapons. They're going to use the absolute best. So if you're not using the best against them, you're going to be at a disadvantage. I really do recommend selling your soul and getting the top tier gear uh, or, or kind of the meta weapons or at least one or two loadouts and also some varied loadouts for the different maps that you're on. If you're on something like Anomaly, you can snipe, but there's some very close corridors. Same with Cauldron. There's some good sniper angles, but there's also good shotgun angles. I would pick up a weapon, um, you know, in kind of every slot for long range and short range to make sure you have your bases covered because you don't know the team you're going to be going against. Maybe they're a bunch of shotgun rushers and they keep pushing you when you're trying to snipe and you're having a tough time. We all know that the last word is getting nerfed and that might not be enough defense. So you might need your own options, your own shotgun to deal with them. Now, many of you have probably never played Destiny 1 and many of the maps that you're probably seeing on the screen here, 
you've got no idea how they flow. So um, I might post some videos from old footage, from old trials videos and kind of talk about it because I'm sure many of you want to learn these maps and have some idea of what's going on. And luckily I have a lot of footage from trials on these maps. So I'll probably make a guide here and there on these different maps, showcasing some good angles to take. And unless they changed it drastically, it should be a good help for a lot of you new players. Now, I wanna talk about something else that I'm really excited for. Yes, I'm excited for trials, I'm excited for the rewards and the different maps and all those things. Uh, but there's one thing with trials coming back that I think I'm the most excited for, and that is gonna be the surge in population. I can imagine that the population for Destiny is going to blow up. The reason I say that is because this is probably the most favorited um, playlist that Destiny has ever seen. I understand that PvE is an amazing thing for many players, people love doing raids, people love doing strikes, but when Destiny was at its slowest, when there was nothing to do, the sheer entertainment value of Trials always stayed pretty damn relevant, and at times when the community was relatively bored, it still kept things alive. There were still people jumping on every single Friday, and I think because it is a game mode that is only around on the weekend, those surges in population, those surges in hype, it's kind of nice because you know when you jump on for the weekend, there's going to be a ton of other players playing. That leads to better connections for your games, faster searching, and an overall better experience in PvP. I think PvP has been neglected for a long time. I think PvP has been one of those things that, yes, it's in the game, but... Has it been in a good state? Has it been uh, shown any love from Bungie? And I wouldn't say it has. I think that a lot of the different activities and different things for PvE have gotten better and better and better. Uh, the progression systems, the farming systems, the overall different quality activities that have come from the Menagerie and even the Sundial, whether you liked it or not, they're pretty damn good. A lot better than my shotgunning, apparently! My god! Now, I'm getting off topic here, but I think that this population surge for PvP players, uh, it also impacts PvE players as well. This is a pinnacle PvP activity. People want to win, they want to go flawless, they want to get the best gear, and so they're going to care about their gear a lot more. Someone like myself, I haven't really paid attention that much to the, uh, the stats on my gear. I haven't been farming endgame activities because I just don't care. A... 5% cooldown on a grenade isn't going to win me or lose me a rumble game. Or at least I don't care if that 5% grenade cooldown wins me or loses me a rumble game. But I am damn sure to be farming loot trying to get the best rolls possible going into trials. Because if that grenade doesn't come back to save my life, I'm going to be pissed! Right? If I lose a flawless card because my gear is trash, or my shotgunning is trash, well, then I'm going to rage. I can see a lot of people returning to the game are going to be flooding into want to play Nightfalls, want to do raids. These players are going to need to play some of these PvE activities most likely to get the best gear and are going to want to farm for ascend uh, Ascendant Shards to Masterwork and things like that. And so if you are a PvE player, yeah, maybe the main activity from this update isn't for you, but I can guarantee you're going to have a better time as well running strikes, running PvE content, because there's going to be a huge influx of players that are doing those activities as well. Throw in the Master Nightfalls and most likely some banger rewards from that. I mean, it's going to be a pretty lit season, but I think PvP players as a whole are rejoicing. I know I'm rejoicing, and I'm really excited to see what happens with this community. I think that the player base is going to literally double. It's going to double, it's going to triple from where it's been at the past few weeks. If you look at the Steam charts, you know, it's dipped down into the 70,000 player, 60,000 player, 50, even 40 uh, when things are slow. And I wouldn't be surprised if we got into the 150 to 200,000 range easily. Honestly, probably more than that. I don't think some people realize how big Trials is uh, to this community. I think people realize how badly they want to go flawless, they want to go to the lighthouse. And yeah, Trials of the Nine was shit. Okay, there was a minute and a half <laughs> loading screen showing off all your emotes and armor before the game even started, right? And, um, you know, now hopefully we're getting this game mode 
similar to Destiny 1's Trials of Osiris, and we can start recovering some of that PvP population that's been bleeding for a while. You know, there's been a lot of toxicity, people calling it a dead game. Well, I think you're going to be super surprised in the next coming weeks, especially when people start sharing their loot and, uh, and their pictures at the lighthouse. It's going to be a great vibe. It's going to be a great feeling. I can't wait. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, MTAG, are you going to be doing trials carries like Destiny 1? And the answer is yes. I'm going to be taking um, my Twitch subscribers flawless. I'm going to be taking my viewers from YouTube flawless. Uh, I'm going to do a raffle system on my Twitch streams. I'm going to be playing pretty much every weekend, you know, Friday to Sunday, pretty long hours, and I'm going to do raffles. So I'm going to prioritize, uh, prioritize subscribers on Twitch and kind of brothers on YouTube, right? Kind of people that are paying uh, just to try to get back at them and, and help them out for supporting me financially. But I will do free carries as well for anyone that watches me. So if you guys want to come to the Twitch chat, twitch.tv slash mtashed at any point in time. If I'm playing trials, there's a good chance I'm going to be doing raffles and hopefully I can help you guys go follow us if you've never gone. That's pretty much it from me though, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.